talking about hard working yeah. in studios, mm -hmm. can we talk about, you know, just finding, you know, a, a paid position in a studio and like getting that kind of like break into the industry? Yeah. Because yeah. that, that's that's yeah. where people often struggle, you know, you yeah. kind of you've you've learned the fundamentals and then it's like, okay, I need right. someone to take me on like music, you know, no matter if you're a writer, a music a player, a band guy, a producer, an engineer, a composer, like you know it's kinda like it's either the bottom rung of society because you're the only guy not making any money where even the guy who's cleaning the toilets you know, they have an income and you don't. Or it's like, whoa, you know, I, I'm on top of the charts and I have private jets, one for each day of the week. You know, it's like, it's a very strange industry. So I worked for literally two decades, every single day, recording songs and playing shows and putting bands. And then 20 years later, I started, like, I got signed with Sky Cries Mary in the grunge era. And suddenly I had like a publishing deal and a record deal and I was touring and I had a $20 bill in my pocket every day. I could go to a Thai restaurant whenever I wanted. Like that was great. Like, wow, I really made it. And then 10 years later, I recorded The Strokes and suddenly I'm getting like royalty checks and I could live in the UK and I can travel and I could buy more synthesizers and stuff. So, you know, worked your way up. And as I said, I never intended to be a producer, but at a certain point, bands started coming to me, and then word of mouth made it like become a job. So I expect it's going to be like that for almost everybody. If you're a recording engineer, you go, where are, where's the music? Is it at the club? Is it in my school? And you hang out, you say, hey, come to my house, we'll record something. And then they might tell their friends. Or if you're in a band, you might do a great job and word of mouth. So eventually you get to the point where there is a paid position and then it becomes about from the very beginning as soon as you possibly can you need to focus on where it is you're going and where you want to go. For example, you don't want to be a producer working with bands that even if you're getting well paid and you're a studio staff producer but you're working on the most crap music and you have to use auto-tune every day to take these models that the labels are giving you and make them sound like singers. You know, I would never do that, even for a million dollars. Like, I don't know how to use auto-tune that way, for one thing. I made sure that wasn't my specialty. But there are people and they just take whoever comes in the door that the label wants and they have to use all, they have to write the song for them, they have to arrange it, they have to tune every single note that that singer sings. You know, it's, it's hard work, but you don't, maybe you don't want to do that. You just want to work with cool people that you already like in the genre that you like. So be very specific about where you're hanging out, who you're talking with, who you're collaborating with. Like, make sure it feels good, even at the beginning, because you don't want to be successful doing something you don't like. Coming to work every day and having to do something you don't like, that would be a nightmare for me. So. I suggest like getting picky even when you're not like popular and you're not in demand, still work on your standards and your direction as much as you can. Mm. Do you think there are ways that people can still self-fund their development when they're at a junior level without it necessarily taking away a huge amount of time from their creativity? Because the stories you often hear are like they've, they've got really mm -hmm. good skills, they are starting to build mm -hmm. up that portfolio maybe not getting paid that much, and they're having to subsidize, subsidize that by working like right. a, a regular nine to five job. Right. Do you, based on personal experience and people you know, do you, do you have any advice on like self-funding where it's more appropriate work that you're kind of like subsidizing your time with? I think gathering funds and like getting funding is, is not my strong point. Even when I'm putting out my record, I just said, you know, I'm just posting stuff on my Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and noticing that it's being sent out to a hundred people. You know, I, I don't have like a giant investment fund that I could put, you know. But there are some people that are good at writing grants and there are some people that are good at like Patreon and or selling themselves. Some people, there, there are young people that are experts that know how to like do the right thing and the right people. There, there are ways to go about getting funded. I'm not an expert and I'm not very good at it. 
but it doesn't mean that it's impossible because I know people do it. People go and make Patreon sites and then they're just thrilled because they didn't expect it, but now they can actually fund their work, you know? Yeah. So there are many ways. Uh, sometimes I work with Scandinavian bands and that's a very interesting culture because if you're an artist, well, the government makes sure you have paintbrushes, and if you need to record a band, the government steps in, and who do you need to produce it? And though they, they need to stay at a, you know, we have a special producer hotel in the middle of Copenhagen, which is just for visiting producers, so they don't have to pay hotel fees, you know. So there are certain cultures that are more supportive than the U.S. and the U.K., which makes it very hard to uh, step outside the machine. Mm. And I believe that being creative and being an artist is stepping outside of the machine because you're relying on your creativity, your intuition, and your own abilities, which is something that there's a lot of forces in society that don't want you to connect with that energy. So anybody, any school or any person that helps you connect with that and develop it is a, is a good guy, as far as a good guy or girl or whatever, as far as I'm concerned, it's very important.